eating baby turtles got crabs a little bit of a bad rap, but there is so much more to these ten-legged living armors than just that, including the fact that some of them move out of their turtle butt homes to abandon monogamy. Let's take a deep breath and dive in. Crabs are closely related to the shrimp, lobsters, and crayfish we already talked about. True crabs belong to the Brachiura, but there are a lot of things humans call crabs that aren't, like hermit crabs or horseshoe crabs, not true crabs. As crustaceans, crabs have a hard shell, an exoskeleton, and they need to shed their skin, so to mold, to grow. In the case of crabs, this shell is made from mineralized chitin and fucking strong. Well, I should say still fucking strong, because ocean acidification is fucking these dudes over pretty badly. Oh crap, I'm breaking the no doom and gloom rule even earlier than usual, aren't I? When it comes to their anatomy, crabs are essentially folded lobsters. They have five limbs on either side, so ten total, which as decapods makes a lot of sense. Their cephalothorax, so the head and chest, makes up essentially their entire carapath. If you look at a crab from above, that's essentially all you see. The abdomen, pleon, is folded under, and so are the swimming legs. To make things as confusing as possible, the telson, so the actual tail, stayed at the butt end of the crab. Like lobsters, they have claws. The two claws are different, but how different depends on the species. Fiddler crabs have a pretty large one and a tiny one, while others are more equal. Fun fact, there's actual research into which shade of orange the female fiddler crab prefers in male fiddler crabs. Researchers have weird ideas sometimes. Crabs can be found all over the world, in oceans, freshwater habitats, and on land. They all need some kind of water for breeding, though. In some crabs, that just means a little bit of moist moss, while others actually return to the sea for the breeding part of life. Spider crabs are serious nightmare material for some people. The Japanese spider crab has the largest leg span of any crab. And it's a little creepy. These armored spidery crabs can reach up to a meter three feet carapace size, which doesn't sound too bad, but then you hear about the four meters, so 13 feet of leg span, and any arachnophobe's worst nightmare has become reality. But don't worry, these are gentle giants, and you aren't anywhere on their menu. They are detritivores, so they mostly eat dead thing flakes, with the occasional helping of small fish or invertebrates. You are not on their menu. Spider crabs like it deep, and they live between 50 and 500 meters, so 160 to 1600 feet, and they usually only come up to that shallow end to mate. Of course, even these giants start small. A Japanese spider crab mom can lay a million eggs in one season. That's a literal crab load of eggs. These little friends then need to survive. Few of them do, and considering that they need to mold to grow, which makes them highly vulnerable, that's hardly a surprise. The Japanese spider crab needs about an hour to mold in captivity, and that might be very different from real life, but yeah, there you go. And other spider crabs do really, really weird things, a mountain of mold. The giant spider crab, for once giant isn't the largest, does this really weird thing. They come together in groups off the coast of Melbourne every winter. Hundreds upon hundreds of them migrate from their preferred deeper waters to the shallower end of their range to build a mountain where they all mold together, giving them a better chance to survive. Pea crabs are one of the many reasons I want to return to New Zealand at some point. They are teeny tiny parasite crabs that live in mussels, sea urchins, and other animal hosts. They are the smallest crabs, about a hundred times smaller than the Japanese spider crabs. Their carapace is less than an inch, so about a centimeter. Pea crabs are fucking cute also fucking weird. Female pea crabs never leave the house, and when they are carrying eggs, they can barely even wobble around the house. The males are smaller, flatter, and better camouflaged because they need to get from their childhood home to a female. Their tiny larvae then swirl around the ocean as part of the plankton community until they find a suitable home. The New Zealand ones are particularly partial to green mussels, by the way. Apparently, they use chemical cues here, so they essentially smell out their new house. The male also uses similar cues to find a female, by the way. Nature is fucking weird. 
If you've ever watched crabs on the beach, you might have noticed that they move sideways instead of forward. Well, some crabs have actually adapted to moving forward instead. I think it's what gave the light blue soldier crab their name. These soldier crabs live on the beaches of Australia and some parts of Asia. They are smaller with a carapace size of about an inch, so two and a half centimeters, but what they lack in size, they make up in numbers. They spend most of their time buried in the sand, but at low tide, they emerge in large armies to feed on the wet sand. Well, the life inside the wet sand? Watching them march in this absolutely not crab-like fashion is a tiny bit creepy, but also really fascinating, and I hope that I can capture it at some point. It's getting grayer and colder here in Germany, and I'm already longing for anywhere that isn't here, essentially, but crabby conditions aside. Let's move on to our baby turtles. When baby turtles emerge from the sand, they are adorable, but fucking vulnerable. Between light pollution sending them the wrong way, seagulls snatching them up, and our little crabby friends, few of them actually reach the open ocean, and then their other dangers also lurk. Footage of ghost crabs munching on baby turtles circulated the internet a while back. BBC released the clip of a baby turtle wriggling their way free from such an attack, a clip with more than 4 million views on YouTube. Clearly, humans give a crap about crabs. Though I'll never fully understand why humans always root for the cuter of the animals, completely ignoring that the predators are important for ecosystems and sharks just gotta eat too. I must admit that seeing a healthy turtle swim away into the surf makes my heart sing too. We'll get back to turtle crab interaction in a moment, but first let's have a look at these ghost crabs. Ghost crabs like it warmer and drier. They live on tropical and subtropical beaches all over the world. They are even seen as an indicator species of a healthy beach, so definitely important. But we are messing that up too by digging up beaches, building hotels on the ocean side. Maybe we should use the cute stock eyes to make people give a crap about crabs? The oceanic crab might have been the most fun discovery of my crab research. These crabs are special in many ways. They're pelagic, so living in the open ocean instead of on the bottom or at the shore, and they have a very special relationship with both turtles and plastic. Oceanic crabs can even swim. And yes, they use all 10 of their legs for that. Sounds like a lot of coordination. Anyway, even with 10 legs, they do suck at it. And they have about 30 to 45 minutes before they start to sink. And floating is just so much less work. So these oceanic crabs inhabit anything that can be considered an island. They might live on sargassum seaweed, wood, floating plastic debris, or in the butt crack of a loggerhead turtle. The gap is large enough for a couple to stay there, together in happy monogamy. But with more and more plastic debris in the ocean, there are more large islands available for our ten-legged friends and it's turning them away from monogamy. On these larger plastic islands, instead of a couple living there alone, multiple couples live there together. And these couples then exchange sexual partners and everyone ends up fucking everyone. I don't know what I find cooler, that these crabs live in the ass cracks of turtles in the first place, or that plastic makes them change their sexual preferences. Either way, crabs are fucking important for ecosystems and we humans are fucking with that balance. Due to rising ocean temperatures, crabs migrate further north, devastating ecosystems that just aren't ready for them yet. Due to humans shipping things all over the world and milder winters, invasive crab species are devastating ecosystems all over the world. Some of the most invasive crab species, like the European green crab, can survive long times, like weeks, out of the water, so they are very hard to kill once they actually get somewhere they don't belong. Crabs in their own ecosystem are hugely important, and protecting them is in all of our best interest. But to leave you in a more cheerful mood, here's a video of a baby turtle escaping from a crab. Poor crab, but fucking cute turtle. To keep learning, learn about lobsters next. After all, crabs are just folded over lobsters, right? 